Everything about flying just amazes me. The coordination of the baggage, the coordination of the pilots, the number of flight options that we have each day. Did you know that the FAA oversees about 45,000 flights daily? So I interviewed an airline expert to find out who are all of these flights planned and scheduled. You're watching iHeart STEM. Today we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. They follow the money and they follow the people. So it starts as you would expect. Where do airlines think that the next route should be planned? Maybe it's based on a vacation hotspot or maybe it's placed on a new place that everyone is moving. Then they're gonna figure out, will this route make them money? And on average, airlines will only give it about two years for a route to become profitable before they scratch the route. So how are they gonna figure out if it's gonna make them money? They're gonna use a simulation program to try to predict what will happen if they actually include this route in their schedule. Now, this isn't an easy problem to solve. In fact, it's probably one of the most complicated business problems because we're not talking tens, we're not talking hundreds, we are talking about thousands of different conditions that need to be mapped out as part of this program. How much fuel does your airplane carry? Where do your pilots live? How often does an airplane need to be maintenanced? All of this is gonna be worked through in that program. We'll get into the math in the next question. And ultimately, if it's making the money, it should also keep the people happy. It's top secret. <laughs> Not really, but kind of. Airlines use a combination of calculus and non-calculus formulas and something called mathematical optimization. And mathematical optimization is where you change some of the conditions or some of the inputs in those formulas to say, if this changes, how is that gonna change my expected outcome? In this case, how is this gonna change my expected revenue? Computers are used for this because computers can run through these scenarios very quickly and very quickly record what the expected results would be through various and multiples of iterations. Now, I had an opportunity to do this in college. NASA came and asked to help predict foam loss on space shuttles. It was one of the coolest projects I did. Now, airlines, going back to airlines, they will use um, homegrown and purchased optimization systems in order to be able to do this. Surprisingly, there's companies out there that are just dedicated to creating these software optimization systems. But because these systems are so dependent on realistic conditions or realistic forecasts, there's teams of people also dedicated just to scheduling and forecasting. To be or not to be, as cheesy as it sounds, that ultimately is the question. And there's some really interesting history about how the hub model came to be. Prior to 1978, the airline industry was regulated by the government, which meant the government got to control every route and every price. After the Airline Deregulation Act of 1978, a whole bunch of competition got introduced because now each airline could pick where they want to fly and what they wanted to price themselves at. So airlines had to figure out how are we going to optimize ourselves? And therein, the hub model was introduced. Now, there's still some debate in the industry, but most of the airlines use the hub model because they believe it drives the most efficiencies. Take, for example, maintenance. It's more cost effective to have most of your maintenance people clustered in one place because it can drive up synergies. Or take your supplies, for example. The more you buy, usually the less it costs per item. So if you have a couple major suppliers, it's gonna be more cost effective than a whole bunch around the country. The other thing it introduces is new routes because now you can pick up more people along the way. For those who aren't as familiar, overbooking is a concept where airlines sell more tickets than there are seats, and they do this as a pure risk play. The simulation models predict that a certain number of people won't show up for their flight in the end, and that could be for various reasons. They get sick, they book another flight, they decide not to take it. So let's say they booked five extra people on the flight. If five people don't show up, now they can just give those five extra people the five open seats. Now the problem comes in when everyone shows up. And what airlines typically do is they'll ask for volunteers. And I remember in IT consulting back 15 years ago, they'd give away crazy amounts. They'd say, we'll give you $2,000 if you give up your seat and take a later flight. Now, this became a very popular tactic in the early 2000s, and it's been used for decades. But it kind of came to a head in 2017 when there was a very heated situation on one specific airline. Now, because of the reputational risk, because of the, the regulations around overbooking, airlines use this tactic very sparingly. Pretty cool, right? My head is definitely still spinning thinking about all the math that goes into mapping out flights. 
Now, I think my next airline episode is gonna be on baggage because I don't know about you, but when I'm running late and have like a mile and a half to go to get to my gate, I do not understand how my bags get there on time. I'll see you next week.